Good morning to my People's Baptist Church family. Good morning to our guests and friends who have joined us for worship today. We are delighted that, that you have tuned into People's Baptist Church as we seek to, to worship the Lord our God. This is a special time for the people of God as we gather together in the very presence of the great God whom we serve in order to let him know that we love him and that we will serve him until we die. So we want to hear something from the word of God today. And the title of the message is, We Need Each Other. We Need Each Other. A Time magazine editorial said recently, quote, there's no advanced industrial democracy in the world more politically divided or politically dysfunctional than the United States today, end of quote. We all know that there is disagreement between Democrats and Republicans on the economy, on racial justice, on climate change, on law enforcement, on gun violence, and a list of other issues. As Christians, as we listen to all that is going on, which is so confusing and disheartening, we have to remind ourselves constantly that our hope for the future is not what Congress can do but what God can do. For no individual or political party can change the human heart or relieve us of the fears, frustrations, greed, and violence facing us as a society. God in his infinite wisdom established the church to proclaim the good news of salvation from sin and hope in a future that is available to every human being. The church is a divine human institution and it will eventually triumph over the world. It will triumph over Satan, over the forces of evil. But until that time comes, those who constitute the church have been redeemed by Jesus Christ and are given the responsibility of demonstrating the love, grace, and mercy of our God by our relationship to each other so the world can see that there's a difference between the church and the world. The Apostle Paul puts it like this in Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body, speaking of the church. We are all parts of his one body, and each of us has different work to do. And since we are all one body in Christ, we belong to each other, and each of us needs all the others. Now Paul is saying that as Christians we need each other. You need me and I need you in spite of our political, social, racial and other differences that we may have. And so today I, I would like us to look at why as believers we need each other. Why we need a church family irrespective of what is happening uh, in our society today. And first, we need others to walk with us. Colossians chapter 2, 6 and 7 says, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. The Bible often calls our spiritual life our walk. Why? 
because the Christian life is a journey. There's a destination to get to. And so the New Testament tells us that we are to walk in the light, we are to walk in love, we are to walk in obedience, we are to walk as Jesus walked. The Bible gives us many ways as to how to live the Christian life. But one important way is this. God never intended for us as his redeemed children to walk through life alone. This has nothing to do with whether you are single or married. God wants us to walk through life in close relationship with other believers. The church is God's safety net for believers. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, not on your outline, says, Let us be concerned for one another, to help one another, to show love and to do good. Let us not give up the habit of meeting together, as some are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more, since you see that the day of the Lord is coming nearer. Speaking about the second coming. So we need fellow believers to encourage us in our daily walk with God. So how do we do that? By meeting together. Rather, in person, at least there was a time that we were only thought about in, in person meeting. Now you have virtual meeting, but that can also be very, very helpful. But the author of Hebrews is not talking about what we are doing right now in the worship service. He's talking about community. You could be at a worship service like this every week for years and still be lonely because you don't know anybody. Community happens when you are meeting with a small group of believers whom you get to know really well and they get to know you really well. This takes place in a Bible study group, a prayer group, or a ministry group where you get to know one another as you interact with each other. We all need a place, a group where we can practice relationships. Listen to the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 14, 26. He says, my friends, when you meet to worship, you must do everything for the good of everyone there. That's how it should be when someone sings or teaches or tells what God has said or speaks an unknown language or explains what the language means. Now, this is not what we do, not what we do in a worship service like this. You don't hear me asking um, the congregation for a song or a poem. You don't hear me um, asking uh, individuals, uh, how was your visit to the doctor this week? Or how can I pray for you? We don't do, do these things because we are too large a group. We don't get to know one another um, when we are meeting like this in, in worship. This is not really a community, this is a crowd. There's only one place 1 Corinthians 14 can happen, and that is in a smaller group. You need, you need the crowd for worship and the small group for fellowship. You need both to be a balanced believer. When you walk through life, you need a small group of believers walking with you. Ephesians 4.16 says, As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow, so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Now God wants all of his children to grow spiritually and to be full of love for one another. Everybody needs relationships, even though some may think that um, they don't need it. We were made to belong. That's why people join all kinds of causes and groups just to belong to something. That's why our young people join gangs. 
because they, they can connect with others of like mind. They're looking for an opportunity to get to know other people and to do things together. But then let us move to the second point. We need others to work with us. The Bible says that God puts us on earth to do certain things. And we need other Christians to help us to fulfill God's purpose or purposes. Paul says in Ephesians 2 and verse 10, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So before we were born, God decided what talents, what natural abilities, what gifts, what background we would each have to do the things that he wants us to do. And any time we use these talents or these gifts that God has given us to help one another, not only in the body of Christ called, called the church, but even outside the church, we call that ministry or service. But God doesn't want us to be by ourselves or we will get worn out. We need other people to work with us. God tells us why we need other people in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, 9, and 10. Solomon says, two people are better than one for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. You see, we always get more done by working with other people. Nobody is good at everything. We need each other. We need people in our life who are strong at things that we are, are weak at. At West Point today, understand that they have a system where they can feed 4,000 people in 15 minutes and they do it three times a day. And so how do they do that? Everybody has a role to play. Everybody has a position and they all do it together because they are united. In kingdom work, the work of our Lord Jesus Christ, the building of his kingdom, we can't do a whole lot on our own. But if we work together, we can accomplish great things for God. But thirdly, we need others to watch out for us. We need people who will defend us, protect us, stand up for us, help us stay on track, and watch out for us. Philippians 2, 3 and 4 says, Don't do anything from selfish ambition or from a cheap desire to boast, but be humble toward one another, always considering others better than yourselves, and look out for one another's interests, not just for your own. All we need to do read that again and again just to get the sense of what Paul is, Paul is uh, saying here. And that really is a, a, a what you would call a countercultural statement because in America most people say it's all about me. It's all about our needs or, or really all about my needs, my interests, my hurts. But the Bible says look out for one another's interests. Have you seen any of those neighborhood watch signs? That's a sign of, of community. It says we watch out for people here. We take care of each other. Where I live in, in Venom on the North Shore, I've been living there now for the past four to five years, we have a kind of neighborhood watch, not an official one. But if a strange person is seen in the neighborhood, someone will alert the Wenham police. And very soon you see the police cars coming in the community to check out what's going on. 
And for years, whenever we were going on vacation, we would ask our neighbors across the street to, to keep an eye on our property. But let me pose this question. Do you have anyone looking out for your soul? Because your soul is more important than your stuff, your property. Who is watching out for you as you go through the trials and the tribulations of life to make sure you do not get discouraged and depressed and feel like giving up? All of us have blind spots. There are things in our lives that we can't see that others can see. I need others to watch out for me. Hebrews 13.1 says, Keep being concerned about each other as the Lord's followers should. Christians ought to take care of Christians, providing help where help is needed. This is something we take seriously as a church family here at Peoples. Through our Deacon's Fund, we have met and are meeting a variety of needs, not only of our members, but also for those outside the church who come to us with a real need. As members of the body of Christ called the church, we need other Christians watching out for us in a loving, Christ-like manner. Here's a question for you. Who is watching your back right now spiritually? And another question, whose back are you watching out for? Yes, you can't expect anyone to watch out for you if you are not watching out for somebody else. Do you care enough about anybody to say, you know what, I'm going to be with you through thick and thin. I will keep you in my prayers until you get back on your feet, until you are well. I thank God for our nurturing ministry and our deacon, our diaconate ministry, which takes seriously the ministry of caring for the members of this church. This is why we are organized into 16 membership groups, so that we can keep track of what's going on and, and be praying for people and calling them and, and um, assuring them that we are with them. I can say honestly that People's Baptist Church is truly a Christ-centered, caring church, and we need to keep it going like that even after I'm off the scene. But lastly, we need others to wait and weep with us. We need people who are going to be there in the inevitable crises of life. When we are waiting for the bad news or when we receive the bad news we need people in our life to be with us there are many situations in life that nobody should ever have to go through alone nobody should ever have to sit alone in a hospital waiting room during a life or death uh, surgery of a family member no one should have to sit at home waiting for the coroner to identify the body of a loved one who has just had a fatal heart attack. No one should ever have to stand at an open grave alone. We were not meant to face the crises of life alone. The fact is that some of these things are going to happen in our life. We are all going to lose loved ones. We are all going to have situations which we are not planned for. We don't need a hundred people to be with us in those difficult situations we are in. But we do need five or six people who are going to be there when we need them. The time to prepare is now. God says that the safety net he planned for our life is a group of believers who are going to be there when we need them. As Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 8, Finally, all of you should be of one mind. Sympathize with each other. Love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tender-hearted and keep a humble attitude. So when you get in the hospital, you don't need the whole church to visit you. 
But it would be nice to have five or six people, or even three or four, who will visit you and who will say to you, we are praying for you. We are going to be here for you. A pastor tells of a man who was a member of his church for seven years. He came to worship on Sundays, but never got involved in anything. The pastor was the only person in the church that he knew. One day he had a heart attack and was put in the hospital. And while he was there, he got an infection and was in the hospital for two weeks. Nobody knew that he was in the hospital, and so he was not visited. When he came out of the hospital, he went to the church and told the pastor that he was leaving the church. When the pastor inquired why, he said, I was in the hospital and nobody visited me. Well, whose fault was it that no one visited him? First, he did not notify anyone. Second, he didn't ever visit anyone in the hospital. He didn't show that he cared about anyone else. He never took the time to get to know anybody in his spiritual family. And when the crisis came, there was nobody there for him. It was his own fault. This is why the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12 and 15 says, Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. You can't do that if you don't know anyone. If you don't have a small group of people who know you and know what's going on in your life so that they can be there to support you, to rejoice with you and to weep with you. We need each other. The church of Jesus Christ, or I'd say the local church of Christ, is the hope of the world. The world is full of sorrow and it needs a church that is full of joy. The world is full of despair and it needs a church that is full of hope. The world is full of strife and it needs a church that is full of peace. The world is full of hatred and it needs a church that is full of love. The world is full of conflict and it needs a church that is full of unity. And for a world that is at its worst, it needs a church that is at its best. It is vitally important that we, as members of the church, recognize that the church is no better than we are as individuals that the church is no more compassionate than we are as individuals in the church, that the church is no more loving than we are as, as individuals, that the church is no more helpful than we are, that the church is no more caring than we are, because we are the church. And since we are all one body in Christ, we belong to each other, and each of us needs all the others. I saw him in a hymnal that I, I have never heard, but it said, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood, joined heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod, for I am part of the family, the family of God. You will notice we say, brother and sister round here is because we are family and these folks are so near. When one has a heartache, we all share the tears and rejoice in each victory in this family so dear. Amen.